Today's first house call takes me to the hillside community of Pacific Palisades. Located between the cities of Malibu to the north and Santa Monica to the south, Pacific Palisades is named after its high bluffs, or palisades, that run three miles along the Southern California coastline. It's also home to Doris Schalk, who lives right next door to her son Larry. Now, Doris's deck offers a breathtaking view of Santa Monica Bay. There's just one drawback. It can get very windy up here. So today, we're going to build Doris a windbreak. Hey, you, Doris. Hi, Ron. I was so anxious to meet you, I almost jumped up before the steps came out. Hey, Ron, Larry. good morning. How are you? Hey, good to see you. Uh, well, let's take you over to my mother's place. Okay, that sounds great to me. Yes. You know, this is what California is all about, isn't it? That's it's right. Palm trees, volleyball courts, the ocean. <laughs> My gosh. So I can. You're going to be spending a lot of time out here in this. Oh day. yes, yes. I I spend most of my time out outdoors, either gardening or just sitting here looking at the ocean. So we want something that'll keep the wind off you, but obviously mm -hmm. not, obstruct not obstruct any of this right. gorgeous oh, no. view Can't here. Can't do all that. Right. I got a couple things in mind. Okay. Let's do a sketch. Kind of show you what I'm thinking about. All Check right. to be sure that this is strong, mm -hmm. and uh, then we'll go to work. Okay, great. great. Yeah, Doris's windbreak so will consist of five identical frames crafted from two by two redwood lumber. Secured inside each frame will be a sheet of hardened clear plastic, which is scratch resistant and lighter and safer than glass. To accommodate the plastic, we're going to cut a groove known as a dado down the center of each side of the frame. First thing we're going to do is cut out the top, bottom, and sides of the frame. I'm going to come, I'll cut them a little bit longer than we actually need. We'll trim them back a little bit later on. We set the stop block on our power miter saw to the lengths we'll need, place the ends of the lumber against the stop, and begin making our cuts. Using the saw on the work stop, Doris and Larry cut enough wood for all the frames in a matter of minutes. The next step is I want to take, we're going to take these and we're going to cut that groove right down the center mm -hmm. here. For mm -hmm. that, we're gonna need our table saw. Now, I've got this saw all set up to make this dado cut or groove right here. In fact, this was a test cut, it's working fine. Let me just show you what I did here. This wide blade, called a dado blade, will allow us to cut the groove in one pass. I've also added these attachments to the saw, called feathers. The top yellow feather presses the wood firmly down onto the table, while the wooden one on the side keeps the lumber against the saw fence. The feathers ensure that the groove will be a consistent depth and centered in each piece of wood as it runs over the dado blade, which is actually two special blades side by side. Before long, Doris and Larry have put dado cuts in all the wood required for the five frames. Now it's time to make miter cuts at the ends of each piece. Now, what I'd like to do, and Larry, you could do this if you would, is to cut an angle on the end here, right here. In fact, it's gonna look just like this, okay? So we'll cut an angle on each end. And the idea is that then these pieces of the frame will fit together and give us nice finished corners like that. We've set the blade on the saw to cut at a 45 degree angle on both ends of each frame section. Larry and Doris are a picture of teamwork. Now look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Beautiful. You appreciate that like I can? <laughs> yes. With the frame pieces cut out, it's time to measure and cut the clear plastic that will fit inside. For this, we switch to a cordless circular saw. Now I've set the blade so that it's just barely coming through the bottom of the plate here, yes. less than a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. There's just a plywood underneath. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, just keep it up against the uh, straight right. edge here. And the acrylic plastic is coated with a clear plastic film that we'll leave in place for now. It'll protect the surface from scratches as Larry makes his cuts. That looks like it's through. Our okay. next step there is to go. assemble the frames around the plastic nice. panels. What I want to do now is put some silicone in these grooves that we cut earlier. The silicone will bond the insides of the frame to the edge of the plastic, making the entire unit stronger and keeping the panes from rattling when the wind hits them. Next, we brush polyester glue onto the miters cut on each end of the frame sections. Too much. This glue actually expands as it dries and it'll kind of bubble out of the joint. Mm -hmm. So that's just about right. Now, are, are you able to uh to clean this brush after Never. using this glue? No. You cannot clean your brush, your hands, or your clothes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's great glue. And it's fast drying, too. 
we have just about 15 minutes to put our assembly together. First, we peel off about an inch of the protective film around the edge of the plastic, just enough to allow the plastic to fit inside the frame. Lay the plastic kind of right on the wood and then just roll this up like this and in. Yes. With all four frame sides in place, it's time to attach them together. We use a right angle frame clamp to hold the corners in position. Then Larry drills clearance holes at the corners and inserts rust resistant screws. The screws hold the corners together, allowing the clamps to be removed. Now we've temporarily clamped this piece of one by four uh, on here. It's actually gonna serve as a, a ledger with uh, these two clamps. That's gonna support the bottom of these panels, which we've made up. And just a little bit easier installation because we won't have to hold them up in place. We won't be fighting gravity. So that sits right on the bottom like that. I drill a clearance hole through the frame and inject silicone to prevent water from entering and rotting the wood from the inside out. Then we secure the frame directly to the railing with stainless steel screws and finishing washers. Next, Larry and I move on to the remaining panels. Number two. We leave a two inch gap between each frame to allow the wind to blow through, preventing the assembly from turning into a giant sail. Finally, Doris and Larry are ready All for the right, unveiling. Guys, Time for the unveiling. Right. Huh? Okay. Grab a corner up there. Okay. Ready on one, two, three. Oh. There you go, huh? Oh, oh that's Boy, great. look at that. None too soon. Well, I don't yeah, know. There's all this wind coming, but I think there's definitely a rainstorm <laughs> coming, huh? As storm clouds roll over the ocean, Doris's new windbreak might get christened sooner than we expected. It can't stop the rain from falling, but I'm confident that it will prevent gusty winds from keeping Doris indoors and allow her to enjoy this little piece of Pacific paradise.